this is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. Have you guys seen a Mr. Jenkins? No. Have you seen a Steffi? No. Have you seen Dick? No. We're in luck, Daryl. The rapid fire questions and general confusion leads me to believe we've stumbled upon a French farce. <laughs> Please continue. Have you checked the pantry? Zootalor, I haven't. Uh. You see, in classic French farce, people often hide in pantries, unless they're dead, in which case they sit in chairs while others hold one-sided conversations with them. <laughs> the harried innkeeper has arrived. <laughs> Let's see if we can follow the action. Stephanie's in jail, we have to bail her out. My cupcake's in a cage, why? I'll tell you on the way. Harried innkeeper beats a hasty retreat, followed closely by the perplexed male ingenue. <laughs> Dick. You missed him by a split second. Timing is everything in a farce, hence the failure of Marblehead Manor. <laughs> Do you know where he went? Yes, with Michael. Do you know where Michael went? Yes, with Dick. <laughs> Good farce must have comedy. Moliere said it best when he said, go for the yucks. <laughs> It appears to be intermission. <laughs> it appears intermission is over. Mr. Jenkins, we presume? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Miss Joanna's looking for you. She's right outside. Oh, no. I guess I'll have to sneak out at night. <laughs> Hear that, Daryl? Two shows a day. <laughs> Let us ourselves beat a hasty retreat and get gussied up for this evening performance. <laughs> it's not often you find good French farce in Vermont. <laughs> or a good egg cream. <laughs> okay. It's not the coach, it's the coachmen. Larry, his brother Daryl, and his other brother Daryl. Hi. I'm Larry. Um, this Michael has already announced you. We'll let this one go. But in future, please refrain from such unauthorized introductions. What are you guys doing with a Rolls Royce? We bought it at the Rolls Royce store. <laughs> Cuppers, can we buy one too? Michael, we're on a budget. Darn, I didn't know a budget meant skimping. Well, cheer up. Let's go eat some of Dick and Joanna's food. <laughs> How could you fellas afford such an expensive car? Easy. We just liquidated all our assets, including home and cafe. Of course, we had to unshackle ourselves from the unrealistic budgetary guidelines set forth by Darren and Samantha Stevens. <laughs> Guys, if, if you put all your money in the car, uh, how can you afford to eat? It appears we've made a gross miscalculation. <laughs> But we'll muddle through. Do you still have that brochure on cannibalism? <laughs> hmm, that sounds like our doorbell. <laughs> Hope it's not another one of those Jehovah's Witnesses. I like your car, guys. Thanks. If we expire from malnutrition, it's yours. All right. <laughs> Hi. I'm Larry. This <laughs> We've halted our introduction due to the sight of a curious new addition to your lobby. <laughs> yeah, Joanna's Aunt Louise painted it. The artist has truly captured the luminous quality of your flesh tones. <laughs> huh? I'll ask. Daryl wonders what you're doing with Angie Dickinson. <laughs> Angie and I used to date years ago. Really? We've seen every episode of her hackneyed yet truly poignant series, Police Woman. <laughs> yeah, I, I cut off all ties after she made uh, Big Bad Mama 2. <laughs> Daryl also considers that a black mark on an otherwise stellar career. <laughs> anyway, we've solved our cash flow problems. It seems the masses in China pay money to have their pictures taken in exotic cars. <laughs> We've embarked on a similar venture to the tune of a buck a photo. Ten bucks for nudies. 
Dan, I, I, I guess you'll, you'll be moving to China? Shake the tail, shutterbugs. We're losing the light. Who needs the Chinese masses when we have Michael? Come on, Daryl. Let's set up the baby spots for the day for night shot. <laughs> This is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. Hey, my first shift is here. We come bearing gifts, not unlike three wise men on another special night. I gather you bring uh, gold, or frankincense, and myrrh. Oh, Dick, you gather incorrectly yet again. Though you did happen to name two of our accountants. <laughs> Gold and myrrh? No, frank and incense. <laughs> A thermos of warm milk, your favorite bedtime stories, and Burl Ives' Christmas album. I, I thought the object was to keep George awake. That's where these come in. Nice, sharp knitting needles. <laughs> George, listen, I, I, I hate to tell you this. I know, you know, you, you're scared. But, I mean, you, you, you've got to sleep. Ah! <laughs> you made your point, and now Daryl has made his. <laughs> Guess I can sleep on my stomach. like your brothers have had enough excitement for one evening. They'd never been ones for small talk. That's why they continually refuse to attend Mary and Swifty Lazar's post-Oscar party at Spago's. <laughs> you know, Larry, we've known each other a long time. I'll bet we have a lot in common. Like what? Well, we both wear hats. Hey, you're right. Want to switch? Okay. <laughs> Want to switch back? Okay. <laughs> I'm Larry, this is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. I'm not going to look. Will you get away from me? We're here to view Miss Stephanie's cherished offspring, Miss Stephanie. Huh? Daryl feels it must be mind-boggling to have two family members with the same name. <laughs> uh, aren't, aren't you guys kind of in the, in the same boat? I don't think so. Hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl. And this is my other brother Daryl. Nope. No Stephanie's in our family. <laughs> oh, uh, Tiffany Rattle. Daryl cautions you to proceed carefully. The rattle's still attached to its original owner. <laughs> oh, yeah, that must be from uh, Tiffany's new... Uh, reptile department. Uh, Sir George, would you uh, take this outside to that other gift table? You know, the, the, uh, the one behind the garage. You mean the garbage can? Oh, that gift table. Since Daryl here hunted for the gift, he should have the honor of holding baby Steffi. Uh, well, I don't know if your gift was worth $50. The defanging in Daryl's anti-venom shot cost 80 <laughs> Oh, okay. You're, you're allowed to lift our lassie, laddie. <laughs> well, obviously, you're no novice to neonatal. Daryl's never cuddled a sweet, soft young thing before. Unless you count Daryl. <laughs> Show us the way to the baby. 
Well, you can't miss her. She's the only one in the room who's drooling. Except for Thor here. Put me down as patron. Three general admission tickets to the big carnival in Tyvale. They got a Canadian goose at Mambo's. Well, if you're good for a goose, we're good for a gander. And Jim sprung for the bus tickets to Tyville. Nope, changed my mind. Three tickets to the Moscow Circus. At world-famous Radio City Music Hall. Oh, they've got a Soviet bear that cha-chas. <laughs> Jim Dixon, we agreed the best we could afford was patron category. You made me pinky swear. <laughs> yeah, in, in this state, uh, pinky swearing is legally binding. <laughs> right, right, Thor? <laughs> I didn't want to come off an old tight wad like some people. It's not my fault my electric bill is sky high. Well, it's no wonder you keep your heat on day in, day out. It's like a darn oven in your house. Please stop arguing or I'll have to deduct seconds from your baby holding time. Oh, brace yourself for a blast of bawling, Boisky. Oh, 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 she's purring. Oh. Dickums. My, uh, my babe in arms goes goo-goo for the guests, but who poos her own papa? <laughs> she even cries when I croon my girl. Well, you know, some babies just don't dig the, the Motown sound. <laughs> Somebody say Motown? Bong, ba 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 bong, ba 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 sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, I get the month of May. I guess you'd say, what could make me feel this way? My girl. This is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. Uh, Larry, is this, uh, is this important? We're here to save Dick's show from dying on the vine. <laughs> my show is not dying. Of course, you're right. We're wrong. As long as he has a steak knife in his hand, we better humor him. <laughs> I think you've already got one foot off the ledge. If the boy's alleged to have a hedge, it'll give you an edge. I'd like to hear it. <laughs> A list of Daryl's personal friends who could save Dick Show from dying on the vine. <laughs> Billy Holiday. Uh, Billy Holiday is, is dead. That explains why she ain't had us over lately for Carrot Kate and Sing Along. <laughs> Wait, uh, here's someone who's still with us. Uh, George McGovern. Senator George McGovern? <laughs> How did, how did Daryl get to know George McGovern? Well, due to his extraordinary campaign strategies, Daryl was responsible for McGovern's landslide victory in the 72 presidential election. Uh, guys, um, McGovern, um, he sort of lost to Nixon that year. Oh? <laughs> well, I guess that explains why Daryl hasn't been invited to the White House for carrot cake and sing-alongs. <laughs> You, you could really get George McGovern on my show? Whoa, Dick, what have we been talking about? <laughs> the baby's not going to relate to a politico. Unless... Uh, this McGovern, does, uh, does he do funny faces? <laughs> uh, maybe you'd, you'd like it, it better if, uh, if he wore a silly hat. Or, or better yet, uh, dressed up as a pickle. <laughs> Dick, a little take at least two weeks to get a good pickle costume, eh? <laughs> This is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. We're here to return George's drill. Oh, thanks. Unfortunately, Daryl's root canal took a tad longer than expected. Well, here's your problem. You had the bit in upside down. <laughs> Miss Stephanie, thanks again for our last night's elegant soiree. My brother so enjoyed tickling the ivories on your new spinet. I'm sure the only thing missing from the evening was us. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, Dick. Maybe if you had some hidden talent, it would have warranted an invitation. Well, you know, I, I played the, the bongos a little. <laughs> Could you fellas make it over again tonight? Right now, my dinner party sounds like death. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay, Joanna, chicken Kia for eight. Better make that for nine. Sometimes Daryl likes to bring his imaginary friend Ronald to these affairs. Oh, wonderful. I'm always looking for an excuse to spend an entire day in a hot kitchen. <laughs> then this must be your lucky day. Say hey, one and all. Me and mine are off to the mall. C can't you, you just say hi? Not when this slap happy pappy is charged for charging. <laughs> The uh, spring infant wear line is in, and I want to scoop up a sack full of those baby Yves Saint Laurent stretchies. Michael, don't you think you're overindulging baby Stephanie just a tiny bit? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the morning chuckle, Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Michael, we're having another party tonight. Dick and Joanna invited themselves over. Our host hasn't even showed up yet, and our hostess is upstairs soaking in a, in a damn bubble bath. <laughs> okay, who wants another hit? Well, it's at the top, Bob. How I do savor the 66 Chateau Latour. A bit pricey, but ooh, that nutty bouquet. <laughs> Apparently, that jack-in-the-box has tickled my siblings' collective fancies. <laughs> suspense followed by an element of surprise. <laughs> the same device exploited by Hitchcock in his overly spoofed 1960 thriller Psycho. <laughs> we'll grab a burger at Jack in the Box. <laughs> the rise in the cat population has something to do with the decline of the mouse population. <laughs> My brothers scoff at your theory. They blame the decline in the mouse population on their wildly successful line of rodent skin coats and mufflers. <laughs> Elegant mouse, rat, and weasel skins. For the discriminating buyer who's tired of wearing feathers. <laughs> well, I know I'm pretty bored with my chicken hat. <laughs> well, I'm not waiting any longer. I'm going to serve dinner before my crab cakes burn. Uh, actually, uh, Michael took little Steph to one of those park things, you know, to show her that the, the best things in life are free. Well, now, who would put a stupid idea like that in his head? <laughs> well, well, you look at the time. <laughs> Imagine how much fun one of these dinner parties would be if we actually ate dinner. I agree, Daryl. This is eerily reminiscent of our all-naked production of Edward Albee's Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. 